Hello, how's it going? Today, we're talking about a new world tree, Andrasil, and also some old god stuff. But before I do that, I usually do this at the end of the video, but being a tiny channel, you sometimes get stuck in a bit of a rut. So if you enjoy this video, subscribe if you want, and if you don't like, talk to me in the comments. Your feedback is valued. But with that out of the way, let's go! The Sundering hadn't just reshaped the world, it had weakened the prisons that the old gods were held captive in. And that's terrible. Over the several thousand years that the elves had been playing silly buggers, the old gods' tendrils of corruption had spilled from these prisons and gradually worked their way to the world's surface. Northrend, where yogg saron was imprisoned, saw the worst of it. A weird new mineral called Saronite had spread throughout the land and was sapping life from the native flora and fauna. A small group of druids from the Cenarian Circle weren't big fans of this. They decided Saronite needed eradicating. The idea was, Nordrasil had managed to heal the lands around Mount Hyjal, so maybe another world tree in Northrend would do the same thing. The group's leader, Fandral Staghelm, was particularly obsessed with this idea. He was advised to seek guidance from the Dragon Aspects. After all, they planted Nordrasil, so it was probably best to check with them in case there was any unforeseen circumstances. But Fandral felt like there was no time for that. Saronite was spreading unchecked across Northrend and even other parts of the world. There was no bloody time for a brain trust meeting. So Fandral and some of his closest mates cut six enchanted branches from Nordrasil, and they took these branches to locations where Saronite blooms had sprung to life. One by one, they planted the branches in these regions, hoping to stop the corruption. These areas included Ashenvale, Crystal Song Forest, Ferilas, and two regions in the Eastern Kingdoms called Duskwood and the Hinterlands. And the branches quickly took root. They turned into trees. Together, they acted like conduits. Channeling the powers of the Emerald Dream, they strengthened the local wildlife and scoured the Saronite deposits. Feeling really pleased with themselves, the Druids took the remaining biggest branch to Northrend. This new world tree grew over the largest growth of Saronite at astonishing speed. They named it Andrasil, or Crown of the Snow. The spread of Saronite ceased and wildlife flourished. Malfurion and the rest of the Scenarian Circle were bloody furious that this had been done without their approval, but they weren't completely unreasonable on account of the plan seemingly having worked. For several decades, everything seemed great. But like I always say, this is Warcraft, so things went wrong. Suddenly, the Tornker and the Forest Nymphs started fighting. These two races weren't exactly known for being aggressive, and yet now, they were proper going at it, viciously. So the Cenarian Circle launched an expedition to investigate the source of the violence, and what they found gave them the Goosey Boots. Andrasil's roots had grown so deep that they'd found their way to yogg -Saron's prison, and the Old God had infused the roots with its energies. Basically, every living thing in the area was slowly being driven to madness. Turns out, without the Aspect's blessing, Andrasil was vulnerable to corruption, and there was no way to spare the World Tree or ease its suffering. So the Cenarian Circle only really had one option. Crying their eyes out, they cut the tree down. This thing came down with such a big crash that you could hear the echoes in the Emerald Dream. They renamed the fallen tree Vordrasil, which means Broken Crown. The Cenarian Circle wiped their tears and, although heartbroken, felt pleased with themselves again. Saronite was no longer an issue, so Andrasil had fulfilled its purpose. However, once again, this is Warcraft. Things always go wrong. yogg had used the trees planted by Fandral as a doorway into the Emerald Dream, a doorway the other old gods could use as well. Small seeds of corruption were spread throughout Isera's realm. This marked the beginning of what would become known as the Emerald Nightmare. And now, we're going to talk about something else entirely. We're headed back to Olderman, where Arkitith, Ionea, some Earthen, and a bunch of Mechanoids have been living this entire time, and you guys completely forgot about them, didn't you? Arkitus and Ionea had become obsessed with trying to cure the Curse of Flesh, and would often retreat to the lowest chambers of Olderman. Eventually, they went into hibernation and just kind of disappeared. But this story's not about them. Their servants, the Earthen and Mechanomes, were still guarding Olderman, but when the Sundering happened, the Earthen felt the pain of the world breaking as if it were their own. So they retreated to the chambers where many of their kind had gone into stasis all those years ago. This story's not about them either. It's about gnomes. I'm too excited to hold it in anymore. Bloody gnomes. The Mechanomes remained on their lonesome, but they succumbed to the Curse of Flesh. Some of them turned into fleshy beings, simply called gnomes. And these gnomes, completely debilitated by what had transpired, decided to just leave Older Man. So they set out and carved their way into the mountains. Gnomes lack natural strength. They're only little. So the first generation struggled to survive against harsh elements, ice trolls, and many other threats. But what they lacked in strength, they made up for in intelligence and ingenuity. As generations passed, the gnomes dedicated themselves to technological advancement and discovery. They decided record keeping and storytelling was a complete waste of time and not necessary to their survival. So they lost all knowledge of their Titanforged heritage pretty quickly. But they gained a new society. Their engineering and sciences helped them carve out a series of highly fortified dwellings deep within the cold mountains of Dunmoreau. And 
and we're leaving it there. I love gnomes, don't judge me. My first ever WoW character was a gnome rogue, I loved it. In the next video, we'll be talking about the rise of the first human kingdom, and then we'll be covering part one of the Troll Wars. Bet you can't guess what that's about, but if you want to see that, make sure you're subscribed and come back on Tuesday. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, talk to me in the comments, and all that's left to say is, thanks very much for watching, and see ya!